In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, Sega 32X, and Game Gear emulation in the PC version of RetroArch. Alright everybody, we are covering five Sega systems in the PC version of RetroArch today, and I have a very soft spot in my heart for the Sega Genesis, even though I didn't own one back in the day. Playing it at friends' houses will always remain a great memory, and I have since bought and owned a Genesis, but those memories are really what are key for me for this system. But anyway, let's just go ahead and dive in. So to get started with our Sega emulation projects on the PC version of RetroArch, we need to get the PC version of RetroArch installed, so there's two ways of doing this, standalone or Steam. But if you have the Steam version, basically replace it with the standalone version because it kind of sucks on its own. So two guides on how to do this, link will be in the description below. But once you have RetroArch set up and good to go, the first thing we are going to need if you plan on doing Sega CD emulation anyway, is a Sega CD BIOS file. So if you happen to still own your original Genesis and Sega CD and happen to have a Mega Drive X5 or X7, you can actually use that to dump your Sega CD BIOS file. And I do have a guide on how to do so, link will be in the description below. Otherwise, you could just resort to Google to find it. I really don't care how you go about doing it, I just don't offer illegal downloads on my channel, so don't ask. But once you have sourced your Sega CD BIOS file, it just needs to be named according to the region that you are trying to play the games for, and you do need region-specific BIOS files if you plan on playing multiple regions games. So European BIOS file will be BIOS underscore CD underscore E, US will be BIOS underscore CD underscore U, and Japanese will be BIOS underscore CD underscore J. So once you have that BIOS file sourced and named correctly, we just need to add it to our RetroArch system folders. So navigate to where you have RetroArch installed, Open up the system folder, and then just drag it right on in, and it is good to go for your Sega CD games. Next, you just need to source your games for your emulation purposes. So for cartridge-based games for Sega Genesis, Sega 32X, if you still happen to have a large physical collection, you could dump them with something like the Retro Stage Retro Blaster Programmer and Dumper and the Genesis Adapter. For Sega Game Gear games and Master System games, I actually dumped mine using a Retron 5 and Hyperkin's Adapter after modding the system. It was kind of interesting. Not really user intuitive or friendly, but it is possible to do it that way. And then for Sega CD games, you can actually dump these with the PC version of RetroArch. So this will be in the same link that my setup guides are in, so you can just follow along with this if you want to dump your actual physical CDs. The Sega Genesis mini consoles can also be hacked to dump the games off of if you happen to have those. Or, as always, you can resort to Google and find things that way. I really don't care how you go about doing it. But as always, illegal download links are not provided on this channel. But once you have your games sourced, you just need to store them anywhere you want on your hard drive. So find a folder or make a games folder and just put them in there. So for my demo, we're just going to add them to my RetroArch demo folder under the games folder. And there we go. But with our BIOS file and games placed, we just need to download our Sega cores to start playing them. So just go ahead and get RetroArch opened up. Now on the main menu, head down to Online Updater, Core Downloader, and then you can press the right arrow on your keyboard to go down to Sega, or you can press up and left, doesn't really matter either way. But for this guide, we are going to be covering Genesis Plus GX and Pico Drive. Now once both those cores are downloaded, just go back out to your main menu and we are ready to begin loading up our content. So one method of doing so is to head to Load Content, navigate to the directory your games are stored in, Select a game and it should run. If you have your game zipped, you might have to tell it to load the archive and then choose a core. But there we go, Sega 32X games up and running on the PC version of RetroArch, so pretty cool stuff. Now, personally, I don't really care for that method. What I like to do instead is make a games playlist so that way games are easily, so that way games are more easily accessible. So my favorite way of doing this on PC is to use the desktop menu, so you can head over to show desktop menu on the main menu here, or press F5 on your keyboard to open it. Once the desktop menu is loaded, just right click anywhere in the content browser here, new playlist, and we're going to begin with Sega Game Gear. So let's type out Sega, space dash space, Game Gear, and then just press enter. And you should see a new Sega playlist here on the left. Now we're going to add a folder. So navigate to where you have your Game Gear games. So let's see here, Game Gear games, there we go. Select folder. Now for core, we're gonna choose Genesis Plus GX, database, Sega Game Gear, and then press okay, and all of our Game Gear games will now populate the playlist entry. 
And if you want to pretty up this playlist, you can just right click on the Sega Game Gear entry here and tell it to download all thumbnails for this playlist. And once that is finished, if your games were named accordingly, you should have cover art for your games. And if for whatever reason it doesn't show up, you could try editing the title a bit to try to make it appear. So I'm just going to try this real quick. But no, that didn't work. All right, that's fine. So for any games that give you trouble with the thumbnail downloader because you just can't figure out how to name them or something like that, you can just manually add in thumbnails as you choose. So my favorite method of doing so is to head to Game Facts, look up the game in question, go to the media section, boxes, and you'll see box art for every region of the game. So here we go. Game Gear version, Power Rangers the movie. This is kind of a crappy box art, but that's all right. Works for my purposes. You can also search for images on things like Google or other various retro sites. Just moving RetroArch out of my way real quick. So here is my box art. It's in JPEG format. So I just need to convert this over to PNG because JPEG doesn't work on the desktop menu. So just open up Paint, drag your box art in, and then save it as a PNG picture. Don't need to rename it as anything. Just click on Save. There we go. So now on my desktop, I have the PNG format one here. So in the desktop menu, make sure you have the game in question selected. Then you can just drag the box art right into the box art field right there. And now it has box art. So very cool. But let's go ahead and add our next playlist in here. So new playlist. We're going to do the easier ones first. We're going to do Sega space dash space 32X. And there we go. There's a Sega 32X playlist entry. So same thing as before. Add folder. We're going to select our Sega 32X games folder. Core, this one's going to be Pico Drive, and then Database is going to be Sega 32X, and then press OK. And same thing, if you want to add thumbnails, you can just click on Download All Thumbnails for this playlist. And if they're named right, it should find them, but if they are not, it will not. So you can just add them in manually, as you saw just a second ago, if you desire. But new playlist, this time Sega, space dash space, and we're going to do Mega Drive space dash space Genesis and that is going to be for our regular Sega Genesis games so add folder and we're going to do Sega Genesis games select folder core this is Genesis plus GX database Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis and there we go so download all thumbnails if you want them Otherwise, you could just skip it. And now we're going to do Master System here. So let's do this. Sega, space dash space, Master System, space dash space, Mark 3. And there we go. Add folder. So Sega Master System. There we go. Select folder. Core, Genesis plus GX, database, Sega Master System. And then finally, we're going to do our Sega CD one. So here we go. New playlist, Sega, space dash space, mega dash CD, space dash space, Sega space CD. There we go. And now when we add our folder for this one, we're going to choose our games folder. And depending how you have your game set up, this is going to be a bit different. But anyway, for core, Genesis plus GX, database, Sega CD, now, if you have your games in CHUD format, you don't need to do anything. You can just press OK, and that'd be fine. But if you have your game still in bin Q format, make sure you put in a Q extension here so that way it doesn't add all the different bin files to your playlist. And there we go, Sonic CD. So once you have your playlist made and good to go, you can just close out of the desktop menu here. Press F on RetroArch to make it full screen. And to get your playlist to show up, just click on Restart RetroArch in the main menu. Now over on the left, you should have a slew of new Sega playlists. So there we go. And then of course, to play a game, all you need to do is go into the playlist and select it and tell it to run. And there we go. My Sega CD BIOS file is being detected properly. And there we go. Sega CD games playing on the PC version of RetroArch. So very cool stuff. Love emulating Sega systems. It's just such a great experience. But this being emulation, there are a number of core options that we can discuss. So from this point on in the video, we are going to be doing so. So 
To change settings within emulation, you just need to access the RetroArch quick menu, so you can do this by pressing a guide button on a controller or F1 on a keyboard. Now from here, scroll down to core options. And our first set of options are in the system tab here. So first up, system hardware. This is set to auto by default, and that should work for most use cases, but for any time it doesn't, you can come in and manually select which system you are emulating. Followed by the system region, same thing. Default is auto, but you can manually select your region here if needed. Next, we have the option to choose a system boot ROM. So if you have actual official like boot ROMs for the Genesis, Game Gear, Master System added to your system folder, you can use those and it will display any animations that might have come with them. Our next option is for Sega CD games. So this is for the internal memory. It's set to per BIOS by default. So this means that all of your various region games are gonna share save memory. Not super useful if you ask me. I think per game is a better option. That way all of your games have their own save files and you don't have to worry about running out of space. Our next option is Sega CD add-on mode. So it basically tries to emulate the sound quality that comes out of either an original Sega Genesis Mega CD or the Mega SD. So leaving this one auto should probably work best in most use cases, but if you wanna change it, there you go. And then finally, cartridge lock-on. So this will require actual like lock-on BIOS files for the various games. So Game Genie, Action Replay, and Sonic and & Knuckles. This is kind of a long-winded way of using these features. It's way easier just to dump the Sonic & Knuckles games using a hardware dumper. So really don't recommend this unless you just want to go all out. Backing out of there, next up, video tab. Core provided aspect ratio, this is set to auto by default, but you could change between NTSC, PAL, 4x3, or an uncorrected aspect ratio. So it's going to be personal preference on this one. I'm used to 4x3 personally, so that's kind of what I go with. Next, you can enable the borders on the top and bottom of the screen, left or right of the screen, or all of them. So basically, it just shows the full overscan area. So on Genesis hardware, you'd usually see like three dots or a blue border around the game outside of the overscan area. So might be best just to leave it off so that way you just have more of the game showing and less junk data. But personal preference there, so choose whatever makes your heart sore. And the next option is for Master System games. It's pretty much the same thing. You cut off the eight pixels from either side of the screen to get rid of just solid color borders that don't really do anything. Next up, Game Gear Extended Screen. So it'll make Game Gear games run in Master System mode, and some games will show extra data, some games will just show a garbage border. So try it per game, see if you like it. Next, Blarg NTSC Filter. So this is basically a built-in shader for the Genesis Plus GX Core. So you could choose between a bunch of various options to get some interesting effects. So if you want black and white, there you go. Composite. S-Video or RGB. So if you don't want to use RetroArch shaders, you can use this as a good substitute. Helps blend those pixels to give you a more authentic Genesis experience though, so pretty cool stuff, but you can also get the same effect with shaders. So I typically go the shader route. Next up, LCD ghosting filters. So if you're playing Game Gear games and want to kind of emulate the effect of the Game Gear's LCD screen, or if you used to play on the, no the Nomad, you can enable this option to get a ghosting effect. It is not going to be liked by many, but I kind of have a soft spot for it for Game Gear games because I still play on an unmodded Game Gear, so this is what my games kind of look like. But personal preference on that one. Next up, Interlace Mode 2 Output. Set to Single Field by default, which many will probably like. It applies a de-interlacing filter, so it'll be less jumpy, but if you want it to be a little more accurate to original Genesis hardware, you could choose Double Field. We're going to skip over the last two options of frame skip here because just no. Next up, Audio. So our first option here is to use the Master Systems FM output. So it's set to auto by default, so if a game has it, it'll likely use it, but you can manually turn it on or off here if desired. And then you could choose the emulation core that is used for that. So there's MAME and Nuked. Nuked is usually a bit higher quality. And then the same thing for the Mega Drive and Genesis. You could choose the FM synthesizer. So there's a number of different options here, so... The YM2612 is for Model 1 Genesis, which is typically preferred, so you can choose between that or the Model 2s, and then you can choose between the MAME version or the Nuked version, so for better quality, choose Nuked. And next up, sound outputs, so you can choose between mono and stereo, and then you can apply an audio filter to better simulate characteristics of a Model 1 Genesis. And then you can choose the low pass filter percentage to adjust the sound accordingly. And then we have a bunch of different volume output options for 
a bunch of various uh, audio mixing things here. So leave that to you sound people to uh, fine tune to your pleasure. Next, input. So light guns. So you can choose between light gun or touch screen. Light gun is usually your computer's mouse. Then you can turn on the cursor there so you can actually see what you're shooting at. And then for any mouse based games, you can actually invert the Y axis if desired. Next, emulation hacks. So first up, you can remove the sprite limit. So like all older consoles, if there were too many sprites on a specific scan line, things would begin to flicker. You could turn this on to remove the flicker effect. Next, there's an enhanced per tile vertical scroll. So this will help with games that would use two cell vertical scroll modes. It doesn't work for most games, but you could try it in a few of your shmups and see what happens. And then you could change the vertical scroll limit option here when this option is on. Again, these aren't going to be effective in most games, so it's going to be a very per game specific hack. Next up, CPU speed. So if you have games on the Genesis that would just lag because of the CPU but not being powerful enough, so for example, Mega Man The Wily Wars, that game was full of lag. So if you want to overclock your emulated Genesis CPU to overcome it, you can do so here. And then for our next three options, just leave those ones on. Advanced channel volume settings. So again, for anyone that is really into specifically tuning your audio experience, you can adjust all of these audio options in this menu. But that's going to do it for our core options for Genesis Plus GX. So real quick before we move on to Pico Drive, if you head into the controls tab here and go into port 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., you'll see a device type. So it's set to joypad auto by default, so this should automatically choose between a three button or a six button controller if ne as needed. But if you want to manually set your buttons, you can do so here between three, six, two, uh, and other various things. So if you're playing light gun games, you can choose that, mouse. So any manual controllers that you need to set will be within the control tab. And then once you've mapped your controls, you can go into manage remap files and save them as a game remap file. So that way, every time you load up that game, that's the controller profile that will be loaded. And then same thing with core options. You can always save things on a per game basis. So that way it just applies to one game and not others. All right, but let's talk about the core options within Pico Drive. They're pretty similar, but let's just cover them anyway. So anyway, back into the quick menu, core options. So region select, same deal. You could choose between different regions. We're not using Master System or Sega CD with this core unless you're doing Sega CD 32X games. So if you want to emulate the RAM cart, you can turn that one on if desired. Next up, video. So first option, core aspect ratio. So you can choose between CRT, 4x3, PAR. So personal preference on that one. And then we have the LCD ghosting filter. You can choose between weak or normal effect on that one if you want to apply the ghosting effect. Next up, renderer. So it's set to accurate by default. You want to leave it there if your PC is good enough. If you have slowdowns, you could try going to good or fast. Next, audio. So change the sample rate. It's already set to the highest by default, but if you want to change it or lower it, you can do so here. And then we have a bunch of FM filtering options and lowest pass filters, but we're not really gonna be using those with the 32X. Next up, input. So input device one, you can change between a six button pad, um, four way player adapters, or having no controller attached at all. So unlike on Genesis Plus GX, controller options are set within the core options for this one. And then you can do the same for port two. We're gonna skip over the performance tab. There's nothing in here we need to mess with and go down to emulation hacks. So our first option is to remove the sprite limit again, and then we can overclock the emulated CPU to overcome hardware-based lag. So again, pretty much the same options you saw on Genesis. Again, pretty much the same options you saw on Genesis Plus GX. And then again, if there's options you want to have set, and then again, if there's options you want to have set for some games and not others, you can go up to Manage Core Options and save them as the game option file. Now, one last option I want to cover real quick before we call this video is shaders. Again, RetroArch has an extensive shader library, so you can enable them in this tab. Make sure you have downloaded them from the online updater, and then you can begin to load them up. So I like to use CRT easy mode with older systems just because it's just my personal preference. It's easy, makes games look pretty good, and it works great on native and upscaled content. So again, shaders are completely personal preference. There's no such thing as the best or perfect shader. 
just load up whatever one you like, whatever one you think looks good, and run with it. And once you have found the shader that you liked, make sure you head back into the shader tab, click on the save button, and then save it as a core preset. That way, anytime you load up content within Pico Drive, for my example here, that is the shader that will greet you. And then you can go back into Genesis Plus GX and do the exact same thing, so that way the shader greets you there as well. But that's going to do it for our Sega emulation needs on the PC version of RetroArch. Tons of systems that these two cores allow you to emulate, and you just get to experience the amazing Genesis library in a great fashion. But as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have found it informative and it helps you get your emulation projects set up to your liking. But here at the end, I do have a couple of huge favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. Tons of content coming your way and I always love having you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little really goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing you all of this content. So big shout out to all of our current backers. You are amazing. Thank you for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.